Hey everybody, welcome to Reaching Reverie. Today I'm gonna to take you on a tour of our chicken yard. We'll let you see the inside of our chicken coop and show you everything we do here for our chickens on our little homestead. So as you come out of the back door of the house, we have the dog yard. Walk straight on through and we get to the chicken yard where it says keep gate closed no matter what the chickens say. Cause they're saying something. <laughs> you girls wanna come out? Right now it is September 26th and it's 90 degrees outside. So fall has begun. We're having a lot of cooler weather, but it is West Texas. Hey girls. So this is the main chicken yard. You can hear the kitty cats. You want to come out? That's little Russell. <laughs> So as we come into the chicken yard, let me take you guys to where our chickens live. We'll follow this little path to the chicken coop. So our chicken coop, we built ourselves. It's right here. And we also have a little sunshade for them because the sun is just brutal out here. So that keeps a little bit of the sun off directly off the coop to help keep it just a little cooler for the girls. We also have their egg box vented in the day to let some of the heat come out so that they aren't just super hot while they're trying to lay an egg. We do have a chicken run right here. A chicken run is a safe outdoor space that you can keep your chickens in. Anytime that they are not supervised or there is a predator threat, a weather threat, we can have the chickens out here. Um, we can close this door. We have it left open with a bungee cord because sometimes it gets really windy and the door will close on its own. So when we want it open, we'll bungee cord it open or we can close it and it'll keep them safe if it's really thunderstormy outside or if we see predators like hawks or if we have something in the area that we're worried about. Otherwise, we let our chickens free range from dawn all the way until dusk. So most of the time we'll come out here right at dawn and we'll open up their chicken coop. They have a little door that closes and they have access to the chicken run for probably the first hour, hour and a half of the day. And once the sun's really up and we think that the threat of like owls is gone, we'll go ahead and open the door. And the rest of the day, they have the whole chicken yard to run around in, free range in. Otherwise, um, we really don't keep them in here unless it's bad weather or usually the last 30 minutes of daylight, we'll put them in the chicken run so they can wind down, eat and drink water, you know, kind of settle down before going into the coop at night and they'll put themselves to bed. Once it gets dark, we'll just close the door behind them to keep them safe for the night. So let me show you the inside of our chicken run. What do we have going on over here? So we have a little dust bathing area. We refeed the eggshells to the girls for extra calcium and we put them in here and they have free choice to eat whatever they think they need. So what we do is anytime we eat eggs, we save the shells and when we have enough shells, we'll bake them to kill any bacteria. And once they're baked, I just grind them up in a mortar and pestle and put them in here. And when the girls need calcium for strong eggs, they'll eat their old eggshells. And then I have a feeder for grit, which is basically where we just put little rocks it's little crushed up granite and whenever they need grit because chickens don't have teeth so whenever they um, eat this granite it goes into their gizzard and their gizzard helps masticate it helps um, chew the food for them so they eat grit which are little rocks which they can find when they're free ranging but I like to provide it in the chicken run where they don't have access to little rocks and then this is their water we refill this water and completely clean it out every other day. If you try to go more than two days in here, it gets kind of scummy. So we fill this water and in this one, we add apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is really healthy for chickens. We only provide it in this one water because um, sometimes if a chicken thinks it tastes funny, they won't drink it. So we offer several different water sources so they can kind of drink from what they need. Um, chickens know what they need in their diet. So this one has apple cider vinegar. 
I just add a couple of tablespoons um, to a water this size and it helps their digestion and overall um, helps maintain some healthy chickens. They always have access to chicken pellets, chicken feed. This is a layer pellet and they always have access to this. This layer pellet is high in omega-3 um, so that the eggs that they produce are healthier, high in omegas. And then they have a flock block which helps them keep them busy if they're in here. Um, if we have like a thunderstorm or something and we have to lock them up in here, they have something to do to keep them from being bored. They love to peck at things so it's just a compressed block like with snacks for them to eat. Molly's trying it right now. They love pecking at it. We go through about two flock blocks a month. They're not too expensive. It's about $15 for one of these and they will eat it all the way down until it's nothing. And it's just a nice little snack for them. Keeps them busy. We do also have an area just with bedding for them. It helps like if they have muddy feet, it dries them off. It gives them a nice dry place to sit and get out of the sun and they love it. Underneath of their coop, they also have a little area where they like to go and sit. It's always shaded under there. And then this door will open and close for the night and we'll lock it shut so that something like if a raccoon can get into here, which it shouldn't, but if it does, they're safe, like fork knocks in their chicken coop. This is what we call the cluck house. It's just a little chicken coop that we made for them. We have, we open it up. This is where they lay their eggs. There's always, one nesting box that's very popular. Whoever lays the first egg of the day picks where they're all gonna lay. They're kind of like middle school girls. They follow these trends and this was the popular stall today. This is all the eggs that we've gotten so far this morning. This one's a fake egg to help tell them where to lay and they chose this spot. <laughs> so I just leave this vented open to help some of the heat, hot air escape. On the whole perimeter around the entire structure of the run and the coop, we dug down hardware cloth and buried it. So if anything like a raccoon or a possum or a skunk gets in here and tries to dig into the coop, into the run, they're going to hit hardware cloth and they won't be able to get under. We also buried bricks just like these under here as well. So if they do dig down, they're going to hit brick. And if they come out farther and then try to dig, they're going to hit hardware cloth. So it is going to be very hard for any predator to try to dig their way into the coop. Inside, we do have chicken wire, which can easily be chewed through by something like a raccoon. But the top three feet all the way around the perimeter of the run is hardware cloth, which they're not going to be able to chew through. So hopefully, if we get any predators, they're going to have a hard time getting in here. It'll also prevent things like snakes from getting in because something like a rattlesnake or anything that's going to want to eat the eggs or try to get at the chickens could probably fit through this, but they're going to have a harder time fitting through this um, hardware cloth that we have going around the whole perimeter. On the inside, we did along the back wall put brick because we couldn't fit the brick on the other side. So we still have the hardware cloth going down, but on the inside we have brick. So if anything were to try to get back and dig in from the back side, they would also have a pretty hard time. And then the chicken coop is supported on some blocks. And then down in here, we also have bricks and rocks helping to support the siding so that we have it dug down into like a little lower um, graded area for the girls to get down out of the wind out of the rain and into the shade and they love to hang out under here when they're in the chicken run and this shade structure that we have built just to help protect it from the wind because it does get so windy out here we have the poles dug down into the ground and cemented in so underneath this dirt we have um, cement 
and we have four by fours that are sunken into the cement and we have um, these beams are drilled in with bolts and then also bolted down and tied with rope. So the rope's holding on the fabric and then the structure itself is cemented in in the corners. You can see here a little better. We have these cement and then the four by four has holes drilled into it so that the cement has gone into the wood and it's really, really in there pretty good. So hopefully this structure won't fly away. If it does, we can lose this and just buy a new one, but hopefully that frame will stay nice and sturdy there for us. Then behind the coop, it's not very pretty, but that's all of our storage for some of our yard tools like rakes and shovels and things like that. All right, so let's check out the inside of our coop. We have two side doors that help me access the inside of the coop so I can clean it out. They're both the same, a little bit different dimensions, but what we did was we cut off the inside of these doors and added hardware cloth to kind of create a screen door. This promotes more ventilation. Out here in West Texas, it gets really hot. So we decided we needed more windows for the girls to help cool off their coop in the evenings when they're actually in here. They really, the only time they really spend in the coop is overnight or when they're laying eggs. So all of our doors have double locks. We have these, because raccoons can open these. So we also have these um, spring-loaded carabiners as well to help keep these locked so no predators can get in. On all of these doors, I have a uh, one by two that I can pull out so that I can easily just rake all of the bedding out. And then whenever we're ready to close it up, put the one by two back in and it keeps the bedding from falling out. Inside the coop, we have a very large back window, again, to promote ventilation. They have one roost, it's a two by four, and with roosts, you really want them to be at least two inches wide. That way in the winter months, when it gets below freezing, they can sit on their feet and it keeps their toes from getting frostbite. Anything narrower than two inches, you're really running the risk of their toes um, getting frostbitten in the winter. I clean this coop out every week to every two weeks, depending on how dirty it gets, but you really just wanna look at the bedding. Make sure it's nice and fresh, that it's not stinky in here. Um, whenever you don't clean it out enough and the poop builds up, it can actually create more heat. So in a hot desert climate like this, you gotta stay on top of it so that the girls can stay nice and cool and comfortable. That's the chicken coop. Over here, just across from the chicken coop, we have a little area where we keep hay and alfalfa. I put this here because the girls like to go and lay eggs in the hay. And so it keeps them out and it also keeps them from scratching all of my hay everywhere because they will take all the hay and just spread it all over this area. <laughs> but you can already see there's a little nest right there. And I usually get about two eggs a day in the hay where they like to lay. This is what we use in their nesting box. So they feel it under their feet and they think, hmm, this is a little airier. It's a little less hot than the coop. Perfect spot to lay an egg. And they do. And then we have extra alfalfa tucked into a tarp to stay fresh. So go ahead and cover this back up because we don't need any chickens back there. Over here, right next to the chicken run, this is all of our storage for our chickens. We have over here, first container, we have alfalfa. This is a really healthy treat for chickens and they know the sound, like they heard me open it. <laughs> what did I do, girls? They're gonna wait for treats now. We have alfalfa. Alfalfa is really high in calcium and nutrients. It looks like grass looks like hay, but it's actually a legume, it's a vegetable. So the girls eat the leaves and the flowers, they don't eat the stems. So whenever I feed alfalfa, there's usually oh, just the stems left over and they'll eat all of the leaves off of it. So I usually give the girls this every single day as a nice little snack. 
<laughs> and we'll pipe through that. Under door number two, this is where I keep the bedding for the chickens. I recently switched back to pine shavings. I'm not a huge fan of pine shavings. I think that they take a little longer to compost and break down than some of the other bedding options. I was using a type of straw that I really liked um, and they stopped carrying it at our local um, livestock ranch store, supply store. So back to bedding we go, back to pine shavings we go. I also think the pine shavings absorb odors a little bit more than the straw that I was using. Under door number three, this is where we keep our layer pellets. The lighter colored um, pellets are their normal feed and then every now and then you can see a dark pellet. And that is a special probiotic that we add to their feed that just kind of helps regulate their digestion. So you can see in there, every now and then sprinkled in, there's these really dark pellets. And it's an all natural, I gotta figure out, I'll need to grab a bag and, and know what like the brand is, but it's this all natural um, probiotic with all kinds of natural ingredients in it, like pumpkin and um, things like that to help keep their tummies happy. their favorite bin over here. <laughs> Yasha's been waiting very patiently. We have the chicken scratch. Usually we get chickens trying to jump in here. We actually need to get more chicken scratch. Chicken scratch we only feed in the cooler weather because um, corn will increase the body temperature on a chicken, making it harder to regulate their temperature on a hot day. So we'll just spread that out for them. Now that it's fall, we're going through chicken scratch pretty quickly. Here we go, give them one more handful. Chicken scratch. Um, the chicken scratch that we feed, it's actually, um, a, what's it called? It's called a conditioner, and it's something that you can give to wild birds or I don't know, I, we thought that it had more nutrition than general scratch, so this one was a lot more expensive. You can buy most chicken scratch for five to ten dollars for like a 50 pound bag. This 50 pound bag was like 25 or 30 dollars because it had a lot more protein and it has pellets with rich with nutrients in it as well. So this is the junk food, but we kind of tried to go a little bit more nutritious junk food, if you will. If you have chickens and you have any small um, plants that you're trying to grow, I do recommend protecting those plants because the chickens will eat them. Here we have a pekin bush. It's a little chili pekin plant and it's just now starting to bud. It usually produces through fall and winter for us. This chili pekin plant has been here since before we moved in and we moved in about three years ago so it's very established. However, the chickens would devour it if we didn't protect it. So that's what we're doing here. Any plant that they do have access to, they are going to eat from unless it's toxic. Chickens kind of know what to leave alone. So they don't really mess with our lantana too much. They don't like it. They do love our honeysuckle plant. We did have to protect that because they were completely devouring it. Our honeysuckle didn't do too well this year. We had a really harsh, hot drought summer. So it's hanging in there, but this was completely lush and green this time last year. So hopefully it'll come back next year a little better. As we look through the chicken yard, they like to hang around here. This is our storage tack room and they know that the best treats are behind that door. We give them grublies and dried minnows and we keep them in there because it's a little bit more climate controlled than the tin. So we thought that the best treats are in there. So they always kind of pace around like, hey, are you gonna come and give us the good stuff? And we sometimes do. This is a look at the rest of our chicken yard. Here we have a bird feeder. In the fall, in the winter time, we do put the chicken scratch 
in here and the wild birds can kind of eat from it. And what they don't eat, a lot of times they're really picky and they'll do this, they will give to the chickens. So the chickens kind of get this slow feeder treat throughout the day. In the summertime when it's really hot and we're holding off on chicken scratch, we'll just put pellets, pellet chicken feed in here um, so that when the birds come and eat it, they are giving the chickens chicken food instead of chicken scratch. The pecking order is strong. You know, our chickens are actually pretty nice, I think, compared to a lot of chickens. Um, Odette is the pack leader. She is the alpha, but she's a very fair chicken. She, you know, she doesn't really go off and assertively, you know, she's not really aggressive or dominant unless somebody's challenging her or she really needs to be, so. We don't have a, a lot of chickens that, you know, eat feathers or really pick on each other too much. They do, do push each other around a little bit, push each other's buttons, but they're not going around being terribly mean to each other. We have a hydration station over here. We are trying to train our girls to um, like a nipple water system where you have to push the yellow or peck at the yellow thing and it releases water. The girls have not learned this yet. So we still have other water sources, but if you hold the yellow, it will fill up. And so the girls will gladly drink the water from this, but they don't know that the yellow lever is what gives them water. So still working on that, trying to get them interested in it. I do have another water source right here. And this one gallon, we always have electrolyte water for them, which is why it has this yellow color. This one, we are refilling every single day because you don't want to leave the electrolytes sitting in there. It'll go bad. So every single day, we empty out and refill this one gallon. In the bottom, we have just plain old water in case they don't like the flavor of the electrolytes or if it tastes funny and they don't want to drink it. We want them to stay hydrated. So they have several options, regular water, vitamin water. Another water source we have is back here, another five gallon. And this one, again, we change frequently because the leaves fall in it, they scratch around, gets dusty, gunky, um, the wild birds drink from it. So we're always emptying it out and refilling it, trying to keep it as fresh as possible. I actually really like this bird feeder. We have it hung from our pine tree. And what's really neat about this feeder is we got this little cap thingy. This cap thingy is really meant to keep squirrels out of your bird feeders, but we are using it to keep the rain and the moisture off the feed. And it also keeps the bird poop off because we have a nest. This pine tree is full of wild birds and they're always pooping. You can see they have like little poop everywhere. So this thing we have to clean off and hopefully, or luckily, luckily, the bird poop stays out of the food because of that cover that we have on it. Right, Yasha? Say, we don't need your bird poopy is in our food. That's icky. That's icky stuff. I'm gonna peck at my camera. I'm gonna think about it. Yasha's sweet. We have a nice relaxing resort experience <laughs> with our umbrella and our hammocks. We love to hang out here with the chickens. We'll spend hours just sitting with the girls, relaxing with them, enjoying the day. And this area over here is where we are composting all of the old bedding and food scraps. You see we gave them pumpkin today. They'll come over and eat that. We also have a frozen banana back there for them to eat. Anytime we give them any food, we, it ends up here, whatever they don't eat ends up over here and it turns into compost that we can use back into our garden eventually. And it does break down pretty quick. I water this about once a week and I turn it about once every two weeks with a pitchfork. So as we're turning it, it's breaking down and turning back into a nutritious soil. You can see Miss Myrtle, she's checking out that pumpkin. That's pretty good Myrtle, huh? You flipped it over. And the girls will eat everything except that rind. She could see she's peeling it back and eating the good stuff. 
The girls love pumpkin. They love just about anything. They like watermelon, um, any food scraps that you don't want to waste. As long as they're not overly salted or overly sugary, we'll give them just about anything. There's a couple things that chickens can't eat, but it's very minimal. Just about anything they can eat. We built this fence right here to keep the chickens safe from the dogs. Our dogs are actually really chill. You have one right there. Mr. Dyson, he's resting on that dog bed. The dogs are really chill and they're really obedient, but we also wanted to keep the dogs at a safe distance from the chickens because dogs love chicken poop and chicken poop can have like salmonella and different types of bacteria that are not good for dogs to ingest. So we just used a couple four by four post um, stock panel with some chicken wire over it. This is also a great place to mount our misters that we use in the hot days of summer to help keep the chickens cool. Around here we have one more water source for our chickens. This is a tub that I have to clean out every single day, which is really nice because whenever I dump it out, they love playing in the puddles that it creates. I really like this water source because it is like the most natural, I think, water looking water source. It's almost like a little pond for them. On really hot days, they'll walk through here, wade in and get their feet wet. And when they do that, it helps regulate the temperature. When they can really cool down their feet, it helps cool down their whole body. So because of that, this tends to get really muddy and mucky pretty quick. So just about every single day I come out and dump it out and fill it back up. And I usually do this in the hottest part of the day so that they can play in the water because chickens love seeing water run off and they love splashing around in puddles. They also love when I dump this over, there's usually some little bugs under here like centipedes and little beetles and things and they come and they wait for me to lift up this bucket so that they can snag all the little grubs and bugs that like to sit under this little tank. Right, Miss Myrtle. Hi, Miss Myrtle. <laughs> and I love this. This right here, true story. So we come full circle and we can see lots of areas where the girls can have some protection from predators like hawks flying overhead. They can get up under here in this shady spot and dig around in the cool, moist soil. And chickens love to dust bathe. Chickens dust bathe um, to help regulate their temperature and it also cleans them. As they dust bath, like you see Yasha and like you see Pip doing, they get the dirt and the dust all up underneath their feathers and it helps get rid of external parasites and it helps prevent external parasites like mites. So it actually keeps them healthy, dust bathing. Super fun to watch too. It's so enjoyable to see them just having a good time rolling around in the dirt. Then up here on the other side of our propane tank, we have our cactus garden. Lots of goodies that are really well suited to this environment that we live in. The chickens have been a little naughty and they've been getting up here on the table and scratching through the soil and broke a couple of our pots. But overall, keeping the chickens wings clipped helps dramatically prevent things like that from happening. We slacked it a few months ago and their flight feathers got long enough that they started <laughs> jumping up on our table. Right, Miss Odette. So underneath this table, it's a nice shady spot that we also provide another bucket where we put food. So they like to scratch around under here. And this is another area where they can stay out of sight from things like hawks or owls that tend to fly over in our area. Right, girls. It's also a good shady spot on a hot day. And then of course we have the garden, which we do have protected by, this is what's called a horse fence, which has two by four metal wire squares. And our horse fence is five feet tall and chickens can fly over a five foot fence, but because we keep their feathers clipped, ours are not able to do so. 
so they stay out of the garden the best that they can get is any of these squash plants we have a butternut squash and a pumpkin over there that tend to grow out of the fence and anything that grows out that's short enough for them to hop up to is fair game and they get to snag a bite of it but you can see this right here is about probably three and a half feet tall and they are not able to jump that high with their feathers clipped so overall the garden is protected by the chickens i also wanted to update you guys on samiza which is our blue sapphire gem who has bumblefoot she is healing and she's so much better than she was a couple days ago her foot is still a little swollen and we are doing daily bandage changes. You know, living out here in the chicken yard, you can get muddy, her foot can get wet, but for her overall health, we did decide it was best to leave her here with the flock where she can still be social. We thought that her healing process would go a lot more smoothly if she was able to be around the other girls and get some vitamin D through sunshine and really just do chicken things like walk around and scratch for food and be a chicken. So that's what we're doing. We are monitoring her behavior and she is looking so much better. She still does limp a little bit and she does take frequent breaks to gain her energy, but she's eating, she has a healthy appetite and her foot is looking better every day. We open up that bandage and we clean out the wound, you know, and she's just getting so much better. So I thought y'all like a little update about our little girl, Sunisa. We definitely love her and we're so happy that she's doing better. Here's another really cool spot in our chicken yard. We have this old rosemary bush that had a bunch of dying branches and just dead branches on the inside. So we took some pruning shears and cut out a little cave for the chickens and the girls love to go sit in the shade and dust bath under that rosemary bush. It helps protect them from predators and gets them some relief from the hot sun. They have another spot under here that they like to lay as well. That has been our chicken yard, coop, and run tour here at Reaching Reverie. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or maybe you have a coop you want me to check out. I'll go take a look. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Here I have that favorite snack I was telling you guys about, grublies and dried minnows. Grublies are a soldier fly larva and they're 50 times more calcium than mealworms. So they're a little more nutritious. So we like to stick with these and we give the girls these treats on special occasions, but they know where they come from. So anytime I come into this tack room, they are always waiting for me very patiently, sometimes a little impatiently yelling at me to hurry up, but they know this is where the good stuff comes from. You gotta spread it out because if you just give it to them in one clump, they'll try to fight over it.